Come with us where the corn is popped and the throwback Thursdays never stop. It's a magical land not far away. All you have to do is just press play. So hop on the couch and close your eyes. Gonna party like it's 99. Join us, watch the movies of our lives with Blockbuster Eyes. Welcome to Blockbuster Wives, where your two favorite 90s babies talk about movies from the era of a certain blue and yellow video rental store. I'm your host with the most late fees, Shay Baby. And this is Stacy, not always kind, but always rewinds. And you're listening to Blockbuster Wives. Wives. Dun 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 Stacy's getting married at the end of the month. <laughs> yeah, welcome to wedding month. It's here. You've heard me talk about it for months. It is go time. Uh, it is go time, baby. Le- at We've- the time of this recording, less than 30 days. Dude, how many exact days is it? 29, I believe. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so excited. Who's counting? <laughs> 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 so many things no, to do <laughs> Stacy's like very chill like way more chill than I would be well my coping mechanism is making increasingly detailed shared notes which is that I share with Brent so that he knows the depths of my madness <laughs> You're not mad. What are you talking about? But I have like five different ones of like, here's the itinerary. Here's the order of this. Here's the exact table decorations. Here, like everything's like totally broken. No, but that's fucking great. Because then there's no issues. There's no miscommunication. Everything is laid out. What I'm really trying to do is reduce the amount of people who will like be asking me directly questions. Yes. Because that will get <laughs> very annoying. Yeah, you shouldn't be the only one that answers right. questions. Like, and I'm sure he doesn't want that either. Does this look good? Yeah, and I try to like let people know, like I believe in you. Do what you gotta do. I, trust I don't you. have to like approve everything. Yeah, like because if it gets done, we're good. Cool. Yeah, the other day I texted Stacy and I was like, "What color shoe should I wear?" And even after I texted, I was like, "Oh my god, is that so annoying?" But you were very chill about it, which is I, you know, I appreciate it because I'm sure everyone is fucking asking every fucking thing, and you're like, "I don't care." And it's all. It's just it's annoying how gendered it is. Like no <laughs> one even thinks to ask Brent things. You know? So everyone is just asking mm-hmm. you. Are you asking? Are I think you telling anyone? Assume the men aren't involved. Are you telling anyone? Like, can you ask Brent? <laughs> Sometimes I'll be like, Brent's in charge of that. Okay, good. Ask him. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. That's a really cool way too of telling people, like, go fuck him. Right? Like, I'm not doing it. Yeah, I'm not the mommy. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's a partnership. Right. We're both getting exactly. married to each other. Exactly. Yeah. That's why I force him to be on all the shared notes. Yes. Good for you. Which oh. I guess he gets notifications every time I update it. And I was like, oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I updated it. <laughs> His phone like dies every time. <laughs> exactly. Mundo. Well, you're my queen. Cheers to you. Yes, we're very excited. Yes, we are. We're drinking from it's literal so dope fun. chalices right now that yeah. Stacy got. I went to a, this event called the Great Junk Hunt. But nothing was junk. And it was like very nice and expensive craft. So I was like... Why are you wildly misnaming this? But any who's well, I found these four heavy ass pink chalices for 15 bucks. They're Gorgina and they work perfectly with not only the pink living room, the vagina room, mm-hmm. but also just our steez in general. We have pink chalices that are like Ugh. heavy and sexy. At first I thought you said they work perfectly as in like they hold beverages. Oh, well, they sure no do. No leaks. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, there are no leaks coming out of this bad boy. <clears throat> Listen. We're so excited to start off wedding month because uh, it's just uh, any reason to celebrate is great, but especially two people that I love most in this world, fucking psyched. And I really like this because it feels like we get to extend out the wedding experience Mm. because what I hear everyone say is like you put in so much work and so much hours and so many worrying and then the wedding itself is like gone in the blink of an eye. Yeah. Which is kind of sad. So I'm hoping we can like really uh, keep up the energy and extend the spirit. I hope so too because like yeah you kind of I don't know I feel like the a lot of the time the couple that's getting married in movies, television, IRL, whatever, they're like, yeah, we didn't even enjoy it. We don't even remember it. And it's like that fucking sucks. It shouldn't be for everyone else. It should be for you guys specifically but also like enjoying it with the people you love you know yeah and i think we're in like a real tough point in time for weddings because you know it used to be big weddings were only for rich people and so those rich people just had like other people do their shit so they could just like show up to their cool party yeah 
And then it became like, okay, now everyone's expected to like have a wedding, mm-hmm. but we don't have servants. Right. And so everyone's just kind of doing it themselves while working full time, while doing everything else. And paying for everything. Yeah. Yikes. And the sandwich weddings have just gone like through the roof. Yeah. I feel like it started in the 80s. When like everyone started doing stuff themselves. Or yeah, like everyone started having big weddings at oh, like yeah. a venue and you'd have dinner and you'd have drinks and like all that stuff. Because it used to be, yeah, you just mosey on down to the courthouse or like your friend's house. Yeah. You wore your nicest dress. Or like your parents' house. Yeah, and you just wore like whatever nice thing you had in your closet. Yeah. Cut to now where it's like we have shows like Say Yes to the Dress where people are like, my budget's $10,000. And I'm a dog groomer. And you're like, yeah, how? Right. How the and fuck like, do you do that? It has to be perfect. It- and if I don't cry when I see it, I'm going to burn it. And it's like, God, <laughs> how have we gotten to this place? It's always the moms that are nuts. They're so mean. They're mean. Mean, mean mommy. And Not I'm ama- hot. <laughs> and I'm amazed by like how many of the brides are like, so and so has to like it, and I'm like, but why? Yeah, like, why did they have to? Right. Fuck? I I've never understood that either. But I also just like, I don't know. I just don't get it. Like, so if you really love a dress, but like Nana is like a hater about it, you're really not gonna wear it. Yeah, I I don't understand anyone putting that much emphasis on other people's opinions about what you're gonna fucking yeah. wear, dude, on yeah. your wedding day or your sweet sixteen or whatever the fuck you know, mm-hmm. sweet sixteen. That was another show. Oh, that was- <laughs> my God. Yeah, another Holy nut show. But, and go oh. Out for the worst time for us because we were that age. I know. And it's wild that we were getting this portrayal of, like, out-of-control teens. And it didn't help that we went to, like, a very well-off high school. Oh, yeah. Shane and I went to a couple baller sweet 16s. Yeah. Holy smokes. They were... Dude, like, you're turning 16, bruh. Yeah. And that's it's the best part of the wedding. show is you're like, these crazy kids are like 15 years old at the moment. It, <laughs> yeah, when they're just like, oh my God. Like, I think there was an episode of like, was it Lil Wayne's daughter? Mm. And she was like going off the fucking rails. And I was like, God <laughs> like damn. A wee child. <laughs> Oof. 15. You're a literal teeny tiny teenager and you're like fucking going crazy. taking names <laughs> and the parents are like so subservient in the weirdest ways like i know my dad loved the show because he's like are these people real and i was like yeah dad i go to school with them but he loved this one episode where this girl freaked out on her dad because he gave her her maserati like on her actual birthday instead of oh, at the party wait i think i remember and this. she is something like that and she like lost her mind yeah and she's like no no one saw it and i'm like there's literal cameras first of all you're this is gonna be on a show kim there's like the entire country's dying. gonna see it <laughs> the entire country's gonna see it it's and so second funny. of all like shut the fuck up you uh Mm-mm. so bad it's not so and I, the dad was like i'm sorry like you're sorry for getting your daughter a Maserati on her birthday. It's literally yeah. like that Tyler, the creator skit from um his show. What was it called? Loiter Squad. Yeah, Loiter Squad. Where he's just like, so you're just going to get me a birthday. Get them my fucking birthday. Before we're me a birthday. And he, the guy's like, happy birthday. And he just fucking whacks him with the exactly. glass. It's like, where, where are we? Like, that's not that far off from what mm-hmm. we saw in Sweet Fucking 16. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's wedding shows similar to that, too. Brent and I tried watching one, but it was just too stressful because the bride was like, Mm-mm. out of control <laughs> and she was like inspecting all of her bridesmaids outfits <gasps> but like being so mean Ew, so mean no. she's like why didn't you wax your stomach <gasps> in your what <laughs> bridal <laughs> outfit are you <laughs> and you couldn't even see it oh she was just God. being rude <laughs> what did you wax your stomach <laughs> she was on one i remember when i was this is a fun story I remember when I was a teenager, I don't remember who it was, but like someone was talking mad shit about another girl who had like hair on her stomach. And I'm just saying like when we're teenagers, we're so fucking mean because that gave me a complex for like the rest of my life. It's still like a complex in my mind. I'm like, I can't have a hairy stomach. Otherwise, I'm not hot. And I'm just like, what? Yeah. And I actually saw Mean Girls in Musical last night. And that's like a big part of it. It's just like. As much as we tell teenage girls and boys or whoever to be like, don't care what anyone thinks. Like, it's incredibly hard to do that when you have little mashed potato brains and you're like learning everything for the first time. Like, it's easy for adults to look back and be like, you shouldn't care. But it's like at that time, you're like a sponge taking all this information. Oh, yeah. And you're not good at discerning what's good or bad information. No. So you hear hairy stomachs are gross and you're like, fuck. And you don't have like any frame of reference to be like, who cares? 
years, especially because a lot of the time that stuff is coming from your parents or coming from, Mm -hmm. you know, the people you're supposed to be listening to. Which we'll talk about in the context of this movie today. Holy (laughs) fuck. Talk about a damaging movie to come out when we were teens. Sheesh. (laughs) My God. Yeah, we were freshly 14 years old when this movie came out. And this was the dominant culture. My God. Uh, Well, it perfectly represents. Well, it. Yeah, it falls in line with a lot of other movies that came out at that time, which is just like, let's use women. <laughs> let's yeah, lie and do news. everything we can. <laughs> yeah, like if you were an alien and only watched movies from this era, you would have such a fucked idea of who women are and what their motivations are. And Yeah, you would have a side Von Dutch cap and mm-hmm. be lying out of your ass to get laid. Yeah, and like, think only men stop. can have thoughts. Yeah, what women <laughs> say and feel does not fucking matter at all as long as not they give up their pussy dog. It's incidental to what you want. Right. So, happy wedding month. <laughs> For the cheers. third cheers. Love you. Oh, I love you too. And today, we are talking about the elusive, the amazing, the problematic <laughs> wedding crashers, baby. Wedding crashers. It is hard to overstate what a hit this movie was. Mm. It was such a big deal. I actually have lots of info about that for... Okay, you want to get into corporate bullshit? Yeah, let's get right into let's corporate just get bullshit. Right in there because I'm excited to see just... I'm, exci- I'm excited to see if my perception of this being like the biggest movie in the world are true. Okay, let's do it. Let's see. Corporate bullshit. Some bullshit. So this movie was released. The London premiere was on July 4th, 2005. Then it came out in American theaters July 15th, 2005. It is 119 minutes. So well within our... Yeah, but a little little longer than I would have thought. Yep. Almost Um, two hours. I know. And it's a one... Or sorry, it's a $40 million budget. Not bad. But it made two hundred and eighty-eight point five million dollars in box office. Wow! So it was a fucking smash hit. It was a smash hit. In fact, it was the first R-rated comedy ever to make two hundred million dollars at the domestic box office. Wow! And that's kind of what I remember is like this ushered in this era of like filthy male-centered comedy. Yeah, and it was like seen as like this movie and forty-year-old virgin, which I would mm. argue to say are like very similar as far as like the use of comedy and like you said like dirty r-rated like raunchy blah 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 comedies so they are thought to like they launched a new era of that type of comedy but all male dominated right which is why Mm -hmm. bridesmaids which is another great wedding movie oh fuck which i don't know if it's in our era stay tuned but um hold on we're gonna Google it. research it as we but talk. anyways that was a big deal because that was like the first raunchy r-rated comedy that actually like came from a woman's perspective but that took many years <clears throat> it did it's right after our time it's okay. 2011 but yeah that's a full six years after this movie came out like it took a long time a long time but they were all just like male perspective men trying to fuck like Brett and I over pandemic thought it would be really like fun and ironic to watch all the Dane Cook movies. And we were <laughs> I remember so you told me this. horrified. I was like, these are awful. It's bad. It's really bad. It's so much worse than I remember. Yeah, they're fucking bad. And those were all in like that time period too. I, yeah, like Employee of the Month came out in 2006. Oh, God. Good Luck Chuck was like 2007. Yeah, when we were literally, may, I would say 14 through 16 was when maybe some of the most... Um, not only like iconic and like really important comedies of that time came out, but also they were just so fucked, especially as young women. Right. They were just such an aggressively male point of view, I think, is what it really comes down to. Right. Which was like the only point of view that was funny or meaningful Mm -hmm. at the time. And like we had to, I don't know. We had to kind of like bow down to that, which yeah. sucks. No one even questioned that. That's like, yeah, that's that's the <coughs> entertainment scene. Like, yeah, I'm sure people were critiquing it, but that didn't trickle down to teenagers. Mm-hmm. Mashed potato brains, mm-hmm. as always. Um, So, yeah, it was directed by David Dopkin, who started his career in music videos. So he did music videos for Tupac, Sonic Youth. Blues Traveler, Elton John, Coolio, and lastly, Maroon 5's uh, music video, Sugar, which is wow. hilarious because oh. that music video is literally about them and it's not fake. Like, they literally crashed weddings and performed the song at people's weddings. Really? Yep. 
Is that the sugar? Yeah. Yo, sweet. Okay, wow. Yeah, yeah. Did uh, you do that before this movie or after? After. Oh, okay. This, so that only came like, out like a handful me. of years ago. Oh, okay, gotcha. Gonna fit it down on okay. me. Yep. Which, honestly, the music video is cute. But also, I'm like, how did yeah. you... I'm sure some couples were like, thanks a fucking lot. Yeah, it, it was odd. <laughs> they all seemed excited, but you know. Mm. You never fuck. Like, mm-hmm. that's fucking weird. Um, <clears throat> So... Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 75, mm-hmm. and then the audience score was 70%. Oh, whoa. Which is I'm odd. surprised the critics' guy is that, or score is that high. 75%. I know. 75, and then huh. the audience is 70, which doesn't make sense to me, but... I wonder if it's like, if we looked at it over time, if it started off really highly oh. rated, and people are now revisiting it and being like, oh, yeah, this shit kind of yeah, like, sideways. And also, Roger Ebert, do you have a guess for oh, what he gave okay. it? okay. I think he gave it... He probably gave it a weirdly high score. I'm going to say two and a half. You're close. He gave it two. Two. Better than Happy Gilmore. Better than Happy Gilmore. Squeeze me. And his quotes are are, like, it doesn't make, they don't line up with what he said about it. Because he said, all runway and no takeoff. And then the second (laughs) one is fucked. He goes, there are a few lonelier sights than a good comedian being funny in a movie that doesn't know what funny is. Wow. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Was he talking about Owen Wilson or Vince Vaughn or both? He just like in that like both of them mm. like in general that movie is like nothing more lonely. Wow. I'm like oh, fuck. Like, wow, yeah, that's pretty harsh. Oh my god. Um, and yeah, that's what I have for corporate bullshit. Corporate. Bullshit. Oh wait, and they won oh. a bunch of awards. So let Ooh, me go over that. Yeah. So they won an award, an MTV Movie Award for best movie. They won an MTV Movie Award for best on screen team for Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson. Mm. They won the MTV Movie Award for Best Breakthrough Performance of um, Isla Fisher, who was mm. fucking oh great. Oh, my God, yes. Um, <clears throat> they won, let's see, the People's Choice Award for Favorite On-Screen Matchup, Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson. And they won, and these are just a handful of them that I just picked. And they also won Teen Choice Award for Choice Hissy Fit from Isla Fisher. And, nice. sorry, the Teen Choice Award for uh, the Best Summer Movie. Wow, and also very gendered, like best hissy fit. Of course, it's a woman. I know. Not none of Vince Vaughn's hissy fits, because Vince Vaughn throws a lot of hissy fits in the movie too. And they are the best part of the movie, I think. Oh uh, yeah, can we just? I just want to talk about everyone who stars in this movie. Yeah, let's. Yeah, let's fucking talk about this because holy They're shit! They're all icons. Iconic. God. Starting with Vince Vaughn. Why is he so hot in this movie? I, I was just. Gonna, he should not be. You know what? Someone was just talking to me about. I can't remember who I was talking about it with, but I was talking about my. Um, what is it called? The like hall pass or whatever the fuck. I don't have a partner, but you know. Mm. And I was saying the like, on site. Yeah. And someone was like, <laughs> Jack Black. And I was like, honestly, no. Like, I don't want to. I don't I don't want to, because to me, he's just not that he couldn't be pure if I fucked him, but like there's just something about like I c- You just want to be best friends with him. Yeah. Like I just adore him and like, yeah, I think he's hot and he's just like beautiful in every single way and I'm obsessed with him. But I don't feel that energy for him. Like, would I fuck him? Like, let's just say I'm. he wasn't Jack Black and he looked exactly how he looked and was exactly who he was. I would fuck him. But like, like it's not like he's unfuckable. It's just like he's untouchable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in my, you don't want to go mind. there with him. No. And I was trying to think of who fits that category. And the person I was talking with was like, Rihanna, I know you're obsessed with Rihanna. What about Zoe Kravitz? What about that? And I was like, no, I don't know. But as I watched this movie, I was like, bingo, fucking Vince Vaughn. Vaughn. I want to climb that like a tree. He's like 6'4", isn't he? 6'5". Yeah. One of his first roles was playing um, the killer in Psycho. What's his name? Norman Bates. Norman Bates. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, what a perfect role for him. Like hot, Mm. tall, weird psycho guy. He's just And he's such a dick in this movie, but he's still so hot. He's beautiful. He's literally beautiful. I'm like, and he's so like... His the way he delivers lines, I think, is what makes him so hot to me. Yeah, he's so expressive. Like yeah. he does so much with his eyes. Yes, and he's got like this like half wink he does, which would be insane on anyone else. Oh if anyone yeah. else attempted the Vince on micro wink, uh, you would think they were like having a seizure or, or like it was Tourette. It was but he emergency. just pulls it off, and it's like endearing <clears throat> as fuck. Oh my god! But I was yeah. looking at his face, and I was like, it's it shouldn't work, mm. but it does. And I think it's because he's so unique looking, especially he's for so, Hollywood. He is. He's like um, tall, gangly, almost like there's something very particular about his nose even. Mm. It's like kind of like there's 
the tip of his nose is like a little bit like tiny and like pointy. Ooh. I don't know. I was like looking at him way too closely while I was watching Me this. Me too. One. I was like, it's yeah. so strange, but so hot. It's like he has a very interesting face. Yes. It's very compelling. It's compelling. It's like I can watch That's you talk all funny. day. Obsessed. Mm-hmm. I would fuck the absolute shit out of him. He's my ultimate zaddy. You heard wow. it here first. Oh, ultimate. That's <clears throat> pretty high praise. That is for me to say yeah, that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm shook. Yep. Yeah. You weren't expecting that, no. were you? And he does have amazing chemistry with Owen Wilson. Yes. They're so good together. That might be why I love him so much because they have such a cute friendship. Mm-hmm. I just love how they interact with each other. They do have great chemistry. It's like they've known each other for yes. literal ever. Right. They really come off as like the bestest of friends. Yeah. And again, talk about weird noses. Owen Wilson's nose oh, is yeah. wild. Wild. But he's still Because so I think he like broke it and like it got Yeah, it got reset. Back, you know? But it's like got full dents in it at like different <laughs> points. And he's still fine as hell, obviously. I, I'm a big fan of like a an interesting slash big nose. Yes, same. And his like yeah. feathered hair, his like yeah. little surfer locks. I know. <laughs> I and like, like the wow. little swoop. Like it could come off like 80s and weird, but it doesn't. No. It comes off like surfer and fun. Yeah. It also like, you know, the 80s had a big resurgence back in the early 2000s, as we both mm-hmm. know. And he has like very like, I mean, every dude had that haircut that we knew. Yeah, like wispy, then. kind of yeah. fried ends almost, but it worked. Yeah. yeah. Feathery of fuck. I've never really been like sexually into Owen Wilson, but he's very, he's also beautiful in this movie. I wa- I'm not in this movie, but I think he's so hot in Zoolander for some reason. You like know what playing he is. that like arrogant male model. <laughs> I love it. It's his like face that he does. And I don't think Ben Stiller's the like sexy in that movie. Sorry, Ben Stiller. But, <laughs> but, uh, but Owen he's Wilson, not. yes. I'm like, yeah. I think it's like his long fur coats and he's just like the confidence. Yes. Um, Ben Stiller is really hot in, honestly, in fucking heavyweights, which we have to cover. Oh my god, I he's can't a even, dick, I can't and I even hate him. What he's like in heavyweight. I know he's in it. He doesn't have a very big role, right? No, he has a pretty big oh, role towards like the middle to end. Oh yeah, because he stabs the blob. He's like the evil guy, yeah. right? He's yeah. like the not the. Oh, I can't remember. I think he's like the new owner. Yeah, of he the like camp. comes in and starts fucking everything. Up. Yeah, yeah. Um. <clears throat> but he's is he so just like muscly? Like I can't think of. Yeah, he's like very like. fit. He has like um, I think he has like longer hair and like, I think he has a mustache. And you're just like meow. Yeah, I don't know. I should hate him because he's literally being like a Nazi at a fat camp. <laughs> yeah. But like <laughs> I'm rough for all. I'm, I'm like, like <laughs> I, I I don't know what it is. I think it's because he's so like nuts that <laughs> he's so aggro. You're like wow. <laughs> I do love. I love ag- a little aggro. Like you talked about fun. for a Fight Club. Yeah. Yes. That's what I'm saying. I like mm-hmm. a little, a uh, little fight in you, because I'm the same way, <laughs> That's and right. it just makes things fun. But um, also, there's this movie. It's with him and this other. I don't even know what she's from. But anyways, it's what is it called? But he's like fucking a lot in the movie, and he's really, really? hot in that movie. Ben too. Stiller. Yeah. Huh. He like he meets this girl, and like they have like a perfect relationship, and it's so cute. And then they get married, and he's like, oh wait, I don't know her at all. She like turns nutso. Oh. And Which is what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. Um, <clears throat> but he's really hot in that movie, too. I can't remember what that's hmm. called. It's called like the, I don't think it's like the honeymoon, but you guys probably it's know what I'm talking about. Anyway. Yeah. Vince Vaughn, Owen Wilson, killing it. And then you have their counterparts, Rachel McAdams and Isla Fisher, Dude. who are gorgeous queens. Gorgina. Rachel McAdams is my Canadian queen. Mm-hmm. And, and she's she, post Mean Girls, right? Um, I believe so. Because I think yeah. Mean Girls came out in what, like 2004? Yeah. Um, this was a big couple of years for her. Like, oh, yeah. Huge. So she was like at her peak. And The Notebook, sure. I think, was coming out right at wow. that time, too. So mm, her dimples were on fleek. I know. And her hair color, that's like mm. my goal. Oh, yeah. And her eyes color. are like so like almost gray. Yeah. She's like beautiful eyes. Yeah. And she, I just, she's just such a cutie pie. And Isla Fisher is... I mean, unreal. Like, like actually so sexy unreal. and like fiery and just gorgeous. Her hair is like the prettiest hair I've ever mm-hmm. seen. It's in like my silky whole life. and like, ugh, long. And gingy, just so beautiful. And then also Christopher fucking walking, dude. Knocking it out of the park. 
once again just killing the game i think i wrote a note for him like i was like i could watch christopher walk and talk about anything do. for hours oh yeah also so compelling i think it's because he has like those big lamp like almost golem eyes mm-hmm. they're like almost clear mm-hmm. and he doesn't blink He's and like, then his rest of his face is like so gaunt but it's just it's so interesting when he says i'm a very powerful man i'm like, like uh-huh. <laughs> I know you are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, the first thing, I think the first role I ever saw him in was in, what, Annie Hall? Wasn't he in Annie Hall as a, like a young kid, mm-hmm. basically, like a teenager? I think so, but I. what's funny is my first like strong memory of Christopher Walken yeah. is that he plays the creepy headless horseman in Sleepy Hollow. Oh, I've never seen that. Which came out when we were kids. With Johnny Depp, I, right? Yeah. yeah Let I've me see when it, it came out. I saw it when it, when it came out, which was probably a really bad idea holy shit it was, and it was so very scary. disturbing wait what character was he he was the headless horseman but he's like oh. super scary it came out in 1999 holy so shit i was like eight years old oh my god <laughs> but let me see if i can show <clears throat> christopher walken sleepy hollow he's genuinely terrifying and i just was like oh my god so that's always who i associated him with oh yeah they filed his teeth into points oh my god <laughs> <It looks> so <gasps> scary. and he's like bloody and gross a lot he's so you know what he reminds me of the boogeyman from mm, fucking what's yeah. it called? So they probably took don't some look notes. under the bed. Mm-hmm. Well, I think some... don't look under the bed came out before this. No, I'm telling you, a lot of people bit don't look under the bed style. Dude, I think so too. Wait, what other movie were we talking about that were like? Okay, same um, year actually. <gasps> 1999. Interesting. Oh, shit. Donnie Darko. I was like Donnie copying. Darko. Yes. Don't look under the bed. That's what it was, dude. I mean, it is the lodestone of. The film scene. I think okay? so. And people are not talking right? about it. But you we heard, are. Yes. <laughs> we are exposing the dirty underbelly of Hollywood. Wouldn't it be so cool if we got anybody from that movie on to the podcast? <sighs> Holy we shit. We need to get, like, I love all of our guests. You guys know. We're, like, obsessed with the guests that we've had so far. But it would be really cool to get someone from one of these movies. Yeah. So if you have connects for any of the movies we've talked about. There is the six degrees of separation thing going on. If mm-hmm. you have less than six. I feel like, yeah, I think my cousin was in that weird Disney Channel original movie they covered. Tell us. Holy shit. Blockbusterwives at gmail.com. Please Oops. do. If Please you have any connects, you. we would love to talk to anybody. Well, now that there's social media, we can probably like DM and see what's up. Mm-hmm. But anyway, okay, moving on. Just let us know. Holla at us. Yeah, top with these stars. Full of stars. Like, hugely popping off. And they're all doing... Like an amazing fucking job. Like that must have been what the budget went towards because it's it. <clears throat> the movie doesn't take place in very many scenes. Like they really not a lot of set work, no special effects. Soundtrack was whatever. Yeah. So it must have all just gone to the stars. I think so too. And maybe that big like that giant fucking man. Maybe I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much that would cost. That's probably some Hollywood execs third home. That's like, true. Just take it. That's true. <laughs> fucking these people. I'm telling you. <laughs> Really beautiful, though. Not going to lie. Mm-hmm. NGL. I like how it basically looked like a little mini White House. That yes. I think was a nod to uh, Christopher Walken's ambition. True. And also, I must say, I'm just going to put that in right here. I have a note like on a different page that I'm on right now. This is our second movie where people are sitting outside of the Lincoln Memorial, mm. like having an introspective moment. My date with the president's yes. daughter. Wow. And you know what? <clears throat> there's more. I know that there's so many more. One of them I can name already off the top of my head is fucking Forrest Gump, which we haven't covered yes. yet. Ugh. I'm sure we will. I'm a big crybaby that whole movie. I am too. Like at least three or four times. I'm, cr- I'm bawling. I know. Oh, baby. I'm a bala baby. I can't handle like simple people going through troubles. I, I just want to help them. And he's so beautiful. <laughs> he is. I'm just like, you don't deserve this. I can't wait to. I don't know when we'll cover that, but we have to ASAP. But that's another one where they have like an introspective mm-hmm. moment. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just Maybe feel we'll like. We'll have like Sad Girl September. Ooh, where we just do sad Or we do like movies. sad movies. Oh, my <laughs> that's a great get it idea. all out of the way i'm like that's a fucking great idea. oh my god i have so many i have so many uh, i was just about to bring them up but i don't want to ruin the no, mood you have to wait and see you wait. stay tuned till september and then just like every month after that until the end of time all right <clears throat> notes here we go i wrote so at the beginning there you see vince vaughn and owen wilson in this like they're like mediators okay i have a lot to say about this. okay i wrote that i wrote (laughs) ask stacy about this because i'm like are there fucking i don't even know about this their job is not well defined yeah they are in the beginning 
both of them mediating a divorce You're right which you would never have two mediators that okay. makes zero sense okay got it's it. too many cooks in the kitchen right a mediator is supposed to be basically invisible oh. which is hilarious because they obviously take <laughs> they're the most a visible. very different tactic like a mediator is genuinely supposed to just help the two sides communicate with each other maybe suggest things based on what the people are saying but they're really supposed to be like just a, a mediator like an yeah. in-between not so they're really doing like pushing people. They're doing like Shay type mediating. <laughs> there are the peer mediators of this divorce, <laughs> telling people what to do. Their outbursts are crazy. They're like sexually harassing everybody in the room. <laughs> like, can we not? Jesus. <laughs> when Vince Vaughn says the thing about them, and don't you want some Latin, some sweaty Latin guy rubbing up on you? I'm like, I have to go. Dangerous, but safe at the same time. I'm like, <laughs> what are you fucking talking I'm about? Like, ah. <sighs> but then but then it progresses and you see that maybe they're lawyers who like do this on the side which is not unheard of a lot of lawyers will get appointed as mediators okay but never to yeah i was gonna say because like in their offices i saw like a bunch of like law books and shit and yeah I'm like, i think they're supposed to be so... lawyers and i also like how they are like you can give us some miles no you cannot and like, the mediator <laughs> cannot get things out of the negotiation like, that's neither here nor there uh <laughs> so i was like funny. this is so off the rails well you just cleared that up for me yeah. i had no idea yeah. that there were even mediators in this situation yeah there's a lot there's often actually mandatory mediation in all family law cases i can see why that would be because obviously like the lawyers on each side are going to be trying to just defend the person that they're you know mm-hmm. literally defending and sometimes there would just be no middle ground unless someone came in and was like how about we mm-hmm. do this or like yeah what i hear you saying is you want this but you want this can we do this yeah yeah that makes sense yeah and it, a lot of things are resolved during the mediation it saves everyone a ton of money and people usually feel better about the outcomes if they've had a say in it rather than a judge just being like you win you lose fuck you right like, nobody really feels good about that no. unless you're like the winner then you're like ha, 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 fuck you but yeah mediations are cool yeah and i mean were they in a pro 1000 yes. but they got some shit done <laughs> yeah. they helped each other see each other's side and, and like saw some shit. yeah <laughs> exactly <clears throat> okay well that that's fucking great mm-hmm. then pretty soon after that you find out that they crash weddings and the fucking purple hearts that they oh bring God. to like the stolen valor act <laughs> oh wow jesus christ well but then that's that's something about the time <clears throat> period that i thought was so interesting because you are supposed to like these guys. Yeah. They're the protagonists. Yes. But the first 20 minutes yeah. is like they're the biggest fucking assholes in the world. I know. And I think that is a reflection of the time. Like it wasn't seen as being an asshole. It was like, oh, they're like funny and cool. And like they know how to get women and that's all that matters. Right. So anyone who's good at that is a cool, is a good person. Yeah. That I like. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, God. And, it sh- <laughs> and you know what? Like the amount of for lack of a better term fuck boys that i met ages through like 14 up until i mean clearly obviously today but like i think really has something to do with these movies because this is what they were watching to see how they should act how Mm -hmm. they should be how they should interact with the sex that they're into yeah like what's cool what's not what makes you the man what makes you a fucking cook and like their tactics like just like lying to every woman they interact with on a an ungodly, like, <laughs> an ungodly level, wild level is with insane. Zero intention of doing anything other than having sex with them. Oh, that yeah, like, is it. Just fucking. That is it. Just fucking. And I'm glad at the end, skipping. I'm like, um, pay a sex worker. Okay. Yeah, holy shit. Okay. At least they get, get something out of it. You get bomb ass sex. You know mm-hmm. that they, you know, know what they're fucking doing in these streets. Most of the time they have to like make sure to get like regularly tested and like they're like, you know, chill. Like it's just a better experience for right. everybody. But I think part of it is this was also the height of pickup artist culture. Dude. Where like Holy shit. the point of interacting with women was to manipulate and deceive them. Yes. Like it was like a, the end goal is like sex or a partner or whatever. But like they called it the game. Yeah. The game yeah. of how you're going to lie to all these women. And that was like a considered a fucking hobby. Totally. I literally wrote down, how come relentlessly zorny dudes use old women and children as pawns to fulfill <laughs> oh, their God, fucking right? fantasies? Blah. It's insane. And people, I mean, it was even shown in um, Big Daddy. Mm-hmm. He used a child mm-hmm. to get to a woman and like begged her to go out with him mm. nuts and but like, it's like yeah they wouldn't like cute right and it's like they wouldn't pay a sex worker because part of it is like they like manipulating women right it's like a power thing yes 
and yeah. it's so gross. And in sex work, the sex worker has all the power, just so and you guys like know. Mm-hmm. So, wow. Fucking gross. Like, there was a scene where Owen Wilson is, or no, or is it Vince Vaughn? One of them is like, here's how I'm going to play it. We're going to do this, this, I'm going to lie, and then, oh, I'm the broken man who needs saving. And I they're wrote like, high song. five! And I'm like, Ugh. I wrote... I'm going to go with the balloon animals <laughs> for the kids. And guess who's a broken man with a haunted <laughs> yeah. past? I'm like, Jesus. It's so gross. What like, the can fuck? you just like try to interact with women in an honest way for once in your life? Yeah, because as you know, if they found out that you were doing any of this like formative gross shit, they mm-hmm. would all like laugh at you and curb stomp the fuck out of you verbally. Like, why don't you just talk to me, you fucking weirdo? Yeah, like, why don't you see if I just, like, like you for you? Clearly, you don't think I will, and that's why you have to, like, manipulate the fuck out of me and every woman you interact with in order to get laid? Like, question mark, exclamation Mm -hmm. point. So gross. It was wild to watch. I was like, whoa. I know. I have in all quotes, he's giving speeches. Like, not only are they just crashing these weddings to, like, meet women, they're, like, putting themselves in the, like, lion's den, like, eating the cake, giving... I'm like, what? Enemies, get closer. I'm (laughs) telling you. And all the cake scenes, they're literally, like, feeding the bride cake. Dude, if I was the bride and I was thinking this was a member of, like, my partner's family and then later look at the pictures and find out none of us know who they were i would be horrified, <laughs> horrified for the rest of my life i also like get they're going to a kind of big weddings but there's there's just no way no there's no way people are like who are you yeah, get out like, oh, <laughs> uncle ned's kids yeah. like what the fuck what no. are you fucking talking about i also wrote um okay well some of the best lines i've i've gotten from this movie like the most random off like okay it's basically all it's all the lines that vince vaughn and owen wilson are saying to each other Mm -hmm. so funny like how um owen wilson goes (laughs) like where is it he goes grow up peter pan count (laughs) chocula and i'm fucking dying no it is and that's what's so funny like i should hate this movie it is objectively bad yes it gives bad lessons it does bad things yeah but vince vaughn and owen wilson are such superstars yes. that it does not matter and no. you still like them yep you're charmed the <laughs> fuck out of them how charming these they people are so are. they're too goddamn it's charming. preternatural they're okay. unnaturally charming they've given their souls to a sea witch or something i don't know how they fucking done it i don't know they just have uh, they're they have hearts of gold and they act in like horrible horrifying ways <laughs> yeah but you're like i like them but, you're like, but you know what at the end of the day it's they're like, funny no. <laughs> it's like, i should hate them based off their actions they're literally sociopaths. but i fucking lo- i'm in love with them i'm in love with both of them <laughs> um also what decom is this priest from baby mm. you know luck of the yes baby. i was trying to figure out this the, the entire oh. time and i didn't realize it was a decom but i was like i know this man. good job you're incredible wow um oh one more thing about the intro yeah i just love that it's such a male fantasy of like the pickup artist culture to think that you a strange man can go into an intimate setting as a wedding and be so charming that you become the star i'm like this is such like wish fulfillment totally like why why did how did you make this about you at all right like wow like you know how some guy like yeah that would be awesome that everybody loved me and they don't even know me i know I will say this though I think weddings do bring out like a weird side of people where they're just like it's almost like not real life it's like Vegas yeah they're like we're answerable to no one yeah I'm gonna look the hottest (laughs) I've ever looked Mm -hmm. I'm gonna drink a shit ton eat the best food be Mm -hmm. with like a shit ton of people and everyone is like obsessed with the idea of like you know because you know love is in the air yeah and you finding just, like, love yeah you have like a craving to find to ha- get attention from people even if it's not your fucking wedding and there's it's gonna like, be a photographer so you're like i gotta be hot yeah mm. like the hottest you've ever looked you know like it's just it's so interesting the the mood of uh it'll be interesting to see what everyone at your wedding is gonna be like in that regard you know oh, what i'm I saying know. i can't wait to see like who gets twisted yeah then there's gonna be some unexpected surprises i'm sure yeah maybe there'll be people that like hook up mm-hmm. after there's like, a lot like... of balcony oh lots of little spots interessant the plot thickens <laughs> the thought thickens i wrote right. they got john mccain to be in this movie dude yes what yes <laughs> wait what part was he in he's just in a little cameo when you're first seeing the like christopher walken's character come out and it's like it's showing you that he's important right. and so john mccain walks up to him and he's like they grow up so fast and he's oh like, yes <laughs> 
Like, uh, oh, like John oh. McCain. Like, why the fuck are you here? Who maybe in what, like two or three years will run for president mm-hmm. of the United States. They knew what was up. And uh, yeah, that's just, that's a big theme in this movie is like presidency. Mm-hmm. Yeah, politics. Like multiple times. I mean, it is mm-hmm. D.C. So, True. But I do sense. love how they portray, like ultimately they portray this rich family as like a bunch of maladjusted psycho assholes. Which I love. Which I love. <laughs> I love <laughs> that like, too. Yeah. I was like. They're, be- they're keeping it honest. They're like all fucked up and like weird and hate each other. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, I think that's right. I think a lot of like the richest families that I know um, and like the most powerful, quote unquote, on paper, they look perfect. And then you start hearing more and more about them and you're like, okay, so you're all just like a babble of psychos. That's yeah. cool. And I think the central problem, and I feel like I see this on a far smaller scale, but when there's very ambitious parents, mm. that is really what their life's about. Mm-hmm. And their entire family and kids are secondary. Yeah. And people know that. And that seeps into people's like self-worth and beings. And yeah, a lot of yeah. times they turn out pretty screwed up because they're like, my parents don't really love me. And they directly reference that multiple times. Yes. And also I was like, yeah. Yeah. Which is fucking great. Like, oh, then will you love me? I was like, God, yes, Todd. You are so fucking hilarious. Todd, yeah. Todd's an interesting character. It's yeah. funny, but it's also like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, it's... portraying gay people as, like, sexually deviant or disturbed. I didn't like that. No. But, I mean, an art freak is always kind of funny. Art freak and growing <laughs> up in that type of family. Yes, where you right. Do not, where like, you feel yeah. like you do not belong. Oh, and the old lady is, like, horrible to him. Who also was in the last movie we just yes. covered. So go back to Wedding Singer. Meatball you, lady. Uh, there's your hint. <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, oh, also there's a part in one of these weddings where he, or it's like the wedding that they go to where they meet Rachel McAdams and Isla Fisher and Christopher Walken. But uh, that's when Vince Vaughn is like, I'm going to make these balloon animals. And this kid is like, make me a bicycle so clown. Funny. And I was like, yeah, that would be like a rich politician's kid. Oh, yeah. And Vince Vaughn's so like shook by him. Like, uh. Yeah. Like, yeah. And he literally You haven't met says, these DC kids, all right? Yeah. He's like, yeah, take it, you hyena. And then he's like, yeah, don't say thank you. I'm like, that is so me, dude. Like, I would, I think I've like literally said that to somebody. Yeah, don't say thank you. Like, so angry. And he's like just doing it because Isla Fisher's like looking at him like, hee hee, mm-hmm. adorable. He's like, listen, I'm going to make you one. And I'm not happy. But he's like, make me a Nice and clown. clown. I'm like, God. He's like, shut is... up, funny man, and make me a boy. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> um, it reminded me of our um, bingo days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bingo night. It was literally one night. <laughs> it was one day. That lived days. in infamy. Have we talked about this yet? I don't think we have. Okay, well, um, so my mom, when we were in high school, my mom was on the PTA for my little brother's elementary school. And um, she would put on like these events or whatever for whatever. I don't even know what this was necessarily. But there was an event where someone needed to run a bingo game for all the kids. And she volunteered me to do it as <laughs> usual. And I was like, big mistake. Oh, huge. <laughs> huge. 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 Do you get commission on this? Huge mistake. Um, so obviously I brought Stacy and our other best friend Becca along with me. And uh, yeah. We started off as professionals. Oh, yeah. We're like B34. But then people are like, B- what? So then we started doing like, okay, um, I as in igloo. But then we started saying G as in gangsta. gangsta. And and all these like, like seven-year-olds are like, what? And then we like ended one game to take like a short break because I think we were just bored. And we're like, we'll be right back. Hee hee. And one of the girls was like, do you remember what it was? She was probably like seven years old. And she just went, boo. And she started like slamming her fist yes. on the table and like a rhythmic like, boo. Yes. come back and, and then i like, come on the oh. mic and i was like take it easy lady we're gonna be right back and then my mom was like did i hear that you said take it easy to one of the kids i was like on yeah. the mic like, i was yeah. like yeah i said take it easy lady because she was booing us literally and like who the fuck does that and my mom was just like you need to leave my mom was so pissed but Oopsies. you know what um don't fall and told people who <laughs> have other shiz to do okay which by the way this is a, a little hot tip for all you brides out there I made a Google like link survey for what people wanted to do for the wedding mm-hmm. because I don't think people should just be voluntold to do random things that they have no interest in doing. So I just I was like, what are you interested in doing? And yeah. it worked out great because people who wanted to help plan the bachelor party got to do that. People who wanted to help with decor and didn't want a party plan got to do that. Oh, yeah. That was very smart because all of us were like, okay, so we don't feel pressure to do like everything. We each mm-hmm. have like a 
thing to do. And everyone will tell you, I'll help you with whatever, because that's a nice thing to say. But we all have our interests and strengths and things we want to do and things we don't want to do. Right. Yeah. I think it, it was very smart and very well thought out. And you still got everything yeah, taken care of, right? Hot tips. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're just going to be throwing those. And by we, I mean she. Yeah, I'll give you survival tips for the... Uh, uh, let's see. We got day. shared notes app and survey your squad. Yeah. Two Did right Brent there. do the same thing? I don't think so. Okay. Well, <laughs> hey. Not. I guess he didn't have as many like responsibilities, mm-hmm. quote unquote. I don't know. Dude's just can pull everything off chill. as a dumpster fire, and no one cares. That's true. Yeah. No one, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's unfair. Unfair biz. Women have to be organized. <clears throat> also, the first speech from this wedding is a definite chris farley impression on a different level oh yeah well i got out of rehab yeah. <laughs> He's like, i've been sober for nine months <laughs> yeah. and, uh, i love you man <laughs> yeah, i'm like so dude good. okay walmart oh, I didn't pick chris up farley? on that but that's so true yeah as soon as i hear someone with like a midwestern accent like from e- like easily from chicago like mm-hmm. so easily i'm like I see you, dog. And he's also a big blonde boy. Yeah. Uh, sweaty. But let me back up just one oh, yeah. scotch because this ahead. is at the reception. At the wedding, I was like, Rachel McAdams is being a bitch. Dude. <laughs> like, you're supposed to think she's like, not like other girls. And like, she's so funny. But I'm like. You mean when she's laughing? She's laughing at her sister's wedding she's vows. She's trying not to. Which are like not uh, very funny. Like, they have like dumb jokes about the how they both like sailing. But I'm like, why but, you have to be so rude? I'll say this. As someone who also laughs when it's inappropriate, like, you guys know what the church laugh is, right? Where, like, but you get the sense, or at least I got the sense, that Rachel McAdams has, like, contempt for them. Like, oh. she thinks they're fucking stupid, and that's yeah, why she's laughing. Yeah, she probably thinks that it's dumb what they're saying. Yeah, and it wasn't just like, a, oh, I got the giggles about something else, and I'm in church, and, like, I can't laugh. She's, no. like, fully laughing at their vows, which, no, again, was. are not that bad. The wife is just like, I want to be your first mate and when you go on the sailing adventure of life, which is, like, pretty standard shit, I feel. Maybe. Like, a lot of wedding vows make, like, analogies to, like, random shit. I feel like what she was doing was bitchy but i understand on a cosmic level because i'm like not that i would ever do that in real life but i do understand what it's like to think something is so fucking silly that you like can't help and she's like trying to stop herself from laughing Mm -hmm. which makes it even funnier i don't know i mean it is bitchy it is a bitchy thing to do but i also think that she's trying to stop herself from mm-hmm. it and she's mm-hmm. not she's not but doing I think a good job it's bitchy and it further gets reinforced like uh, just a few minutes later where it's like she seems to just not like her sister at all she seems to not like her husband at all mm. and i'm just like yeah, uh, like i get you like think you're like better than them but like it's her wedding why are you being such a bitch yikes i mean who knows maybe her big sister's a fucking bitch we Could don't be. know we never get introduced to uh, but then she like sister. cries when she's like i'm so glad you found love so i'm like yeah i don't know what, what we're supposed to think but really because women are not thought out in this film yeah. i think there isn't a good answer and it's really just supposed to be Owen Wilson sees her and is like, she's different because she's laughing at a wedding vow yeah. rather than like crying. Yeah. And she's not like the other girls. I'm sure that's exactly what it is. Because that was like a big theme for women. Um, well, for men about women with these yeah. movies was like, I'm not like other girls. Yeah. I'm different. I'm I worse. laugh in the rain. <laughs> I I like, <laughs> like I like it when it's gloomy. Like I'm different. Yeah, it's this like, is give when me a break. Manic Pixie Dream oh, Girl yeah. started really exactly. running a muck. Right. A muck. I'm like, come on, come on, come on, come on. Um, no, you're so right. But anyways, yeah, then they go to the reception and Rachel McAdams gives this really mean speech about her sister that Owen Wilson warns her is gonna be bad. Hell yeah. He's like, he tries to tell her, he's like, Don't do this. Yeah, he's like, I think you're gonna hear crickets. Sounds of silence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And she's like, no, it's funny because it's true. And he's like, he even says, he's like, people that funny when it's true shit, they like it when it's like a small thing, not something fundamental about people's personalities and you not liking them. Yeah. And she's just like, I'm sticking to it. And he's like, you're going to hear crickets. And mm. she's just like, I'm sticking my guns. He's like, sounds of silence. <laughs> yeah, right. Go, go and he's on. Like, Walk the plank. He's like, you have fun. And I'm going to be the guy in the back telling you I told you so. And mm. then he fucking does. And it's hilarious. I and mean, she saves have, herself. They couldn't have looked less like brothers. <laughs> Dude, I know. <laughs> I'm like, we're brothers. I was like, in what universe? I'm like, he's short. You're tall. <laughs> he has dark features. You have light features. You guys do not you look baby anything. baby blue eyes. Yes. Like, what? <laughs> Nothing alike, baby. Like, zero fucking Same with Isla Fisher and Rachel McAdams. I'm like, y'all are sisters? Yeah, I'm like, how? In no way <laughs> do you guys look similar at all, but all right. 
Yeah, I guess I didn't think about that. They do not look no. Um, Also, Bradley Cooper plays such oh a god. fucking tool bag sandwich supreme. Oh my god. And he looked very different to mm-hmm. me. I, I think this was like his was first younger? big role. Yeah, or it was like, has he had like jaws or I don't know. But I was like, that's Bradley Cooper, right? Yeah. But I had to Google it to make sure. Yeah. I yeah, think this was oh, he's so first. lame. He's so lame. And he like it's funny too because I remember actually I don't know if you guys remember the show Inside the Actors Studio. Do you remember mm, that show? I never watched it, but I've heard it. Yeah, so I guess I don't know what school was at, but it was at like an, some big acting school and they would invite big actors so like Drew Barrymore, Jim Carrey, da da da, um, to the stage and this dude I don't know if he was British or if he had a transatlantic accent, but he would like ask really big questions to help all these like acting students with their mm-hmm. like future careers. Mm-hmm. And at the time I was watching like around this time, maybe a few years before that, I was watching the show like a fucking hawk because I was obsessed with acting and that's like what I wanted to do at the time. And so I would like watch every episode and I remember seeing who I didn't know at the time was Bradley Cooper mm. front and center asking hella questions. I think it was to Johnny Depp, but I don't remember oh, exactly. And then I saw him in this movie and I was like, oh, that's wow. the fucking guy. And like it was only a few it. years later. Oh, I love that. That's so lovely. I thought that was so cool. That is really cool. Um, and I'm sure that has happened with a lot of people, honestly. Oh, so, so cool. anyway, I just thought that was a cute, fun fact. Very fucking cool. Um, also, the amount of times that <laughs> and I know it's meant as like a demeaning term, but the amount of times I've heard broad said by Vince Vaughn in this it's movie charming. is so hot. I don't know how he gets away with it. He's like, I don't you're, know. Really, you're really losing over this broad. <laughs> I feel like I use broad all the time in like an uh, ironic way. I think because we're not of that time period, I don't get insulted by the term no. broad. If somebody called me a broad, I would think it was funny. Me too. I, I, would I be like, think it was oh, like, oh my God. When people call me as broad, I'm like, you're hot and funny. Period. I don't think anyone's ever actually called me a broad to my face. People out people were like, this broad over here. And I'm like, <laughs> I, mean, oh. I don't even remember. But yeah, I think it's great. I think it's great too. I'm like, I know you're saying it in like an annoying way, but you're hot. So mm-hmm. I don't, I, I do not care. Um, also the whole, I'm just going to keep naming quotes that they say. Cause that's like the funniest part of this movie to me. But him saying, um, he's threatened by the way I dance. Vince Vaughn is talking about Christopher Walken, who plays Isla Fisher and uh, Rachel McAdams. Because he is, he is tearing it up on the dance floor with Isla Fisher. He's yeah. so good. They're doing literal, like, swing dance flips yes. and shit. He's got her, like, perched on his shoulder like a fucking parrot at one point. Yeah. Like, oh, and <laughs> like, I'm like, presenting what? Her to the yeah. <laughs> and he's like, he's threatened by the way I dance. Why not? Just show off like that. And then Owen Wilson's like, you're not that great of a dancer. And then he's like, oh, please. I'm a phenomenal dancer. Now I know you're lying out of your teeth. And He's like so immediately angry. It kind of reminds me of me. Yeah, I can see that. Because when I'm being like defensive, I'm like, oh, I know you're fucking lying. You're out of your goddamn mind. Like, oh my God. It's so funny. Uh, also, people in this movie take sports way too seriously. Oh, yeah. Another rich person flaw. Which makes me laugh on a different level. Yeah, and all the like the unnecessary hardcore tackles. Yeah. And just how much okay, what what is the funny aspect of this movie is that Vince Vaughn keeps getting like shrecked yeah, over shrecked. and over again. Which and is, Owen Wilson is being a bad friend because he's like up his own asshole about Rachel McAdams, so he's like not noticing. And he doesn't give a fuck when Vince Vaughn is telling him like yeah. um <laughs> like I'm, I'm in a living hell. Yeah, like quite literally I'm having the worst fucking time and like, this broad like, is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, I don't care. I'm really in love with this person that has a man. Mm-hmm. It's just like, and it's like okay, like, please let me go. Oh my god, he won't let him go. Multiple times he's like, I'm leaving, and almost like, you can't. <laughs> Rule number seven one hundred and seventeen. I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up. Which no is a very cares. pickup artist culture thing to do is to mm-hmm. have these rules. Mm-hmm. They have like whole systems. And I feel like they're kind of pointing they are poking fun at the idea of these rules later on Mm -hmm. but as it's going on it's like you guys are being you guys are fucking nerds yeah it's like the the movie tries to walk such a fine line because it's like they do want like they vince vaughn and owen wilson do like get over this immaturity but you are still like supposed to root for them the entire time right it's like a very weird space it's trying to occupy totally which you're just like as you, I don't know, after like the millionth time you've watched it, especially I've watched this movie a bunch of fucking times because I do think it's very funny. Um, but <clears throat> at the expense of like women in general. Yes. Uh, but 
once you hit a certain age, you're just like, this is, they're just like fucking whack. Like they can't get, they can't have sex with people. Like they can't be right. themselves like, and get to, laid. Like, concoct all these weird stories and go into an environment that they think is like, well, it's easier in this environment because women are so horny. And it's like, okay, do you not believe in yourself to just like talk to people? Yeah. Like even if like they crashed weddings, couldn't you just like be who you are and get mm-hmm. laid? Why do you have to like. Like fake purple hearts yeah, for real. A purple heart to that's what's gonna like, do it because for you. they don't want to pay for the cash bar i'm like wow you guys are lawyers <laughs> you guys are lawyers i didn't think about like that. wow like, how many cash bars he's like <laughs> i like where your head's at i'm like yeah fuck? and it was two it was two and they were like we can't pay for we have we purple the hearts i'm like you guys you're so pathetic <laughs> but is- that's what i mean it's like the movie tries to be like oh they're funny and cool for like going to such great lengths but they're not I do like at the end that he was talking about how immature it was and Rachel McAdams is like, yeah, empathetic. And he's like, you know what? That's the best word to describe it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it is. It truly I fucking your Owen Wilson impression. I'm like, I try so hard oh, to do a good impression. Wow. It's hard. Wow. Wow. It's like wow. you have to keep your mouth kind of closed. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the best word to describe it. <laughs> anyway. But at least he's just, but again, he's so lovable that it's like, yeah. uh, you're so awful, but I love you. He has like a weirdly like sweet voice and like disposition that you're just like. Yes. And several times in the movie, he goes, why not? Yeah. When someone Ooh, proposes something and it's like so genuine and great that you're like, yeah. Yeah. He's I like, Stokies? It. Why not? Why not? <laughs> or even like the, uh, uh, what was it? Sailing? Mm-hmm. Oh, we, or no, pigskin? I love it. And I'm why just like, not? you're just yeah. a likable dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're just chilling. Um, I also love that his nickname for Vince Vaughn is Baba Ganesh. Yes, it's so perfect. <laughs> it's so he cute. is Baba Ganesh. He just is. He's like, yeah, Baba Ganesh. I'm like, I fucking love it. I'm a big nickname girl. Mm. I love that name. I wish I came up with it. I hate that I haven't come up with that. Anyway. Speaking of funny lines, and just one quick side note before I get to this one. For y'all who weren't there. It was considered the height of comedy in our middle school and high school careers to just quote funny movies. Totally. That was how you were funny. Absolutely. <laughs> Which, like, That's how you could show that you were like, cultured if you yeah. like could quote Wedding Crashers. Like the funniest person in your high school would just, yeah, <laughs> had the most like Jed Apatow quotes and they were hilarious. Absolutely. <laughs> just, just so stupid. Anyways, one of the lines that made me laugh out loud is when Rachel McAdams' mom is like coming on to Owen Wilson <laughs> and she's like, look at my tits. I just had them done. And he's just like, uh, uh. And then she goes you know what? My husband, he doesn't give a shit about my tits. And Owen Wilson goes, darn him. <laughs> darn him. But this yeah. is borderline in a yeah. <laughs> Darn him. Darn him. <laughs> but, and he's like so worried because he's like, dude, I'm trying to get it in mm-hmm. with your daughter. Do not fuck this up for me. She's so hot though. She is. I'm like, wow. And the way she talks and like, yeah. uh, like so out the glamorous. side of her mouth, like yeah. sly. So glamorous. Yeah, I'm like, God damn, you are foin mm-hmm. as hell. See, Isla Fisher looks like her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But right. where's Rachel McAdams <laughs> in this know. business? Maybe she got all Christopher Walken. They do have clear eyes. <laughs> you know what? They do kind of look mm-hmm. a little like I could see. Yeah, I could see that. I could see where they're at with that. That makes a little bit more sense. Um, and I love that she also calls Owen Wilson a per- She's like, pervert? When she like <laughs> makes exactly. him touch her titties. Right. It's so- <laughs> oh. Pervert. And then she uh, just walks. Oh, the parents are so great. I also love that at one point, Isla Fisher ties Vince Vaughn to the bed. And then Christopher Walken comes in later. And he's just like, he's like poking the ropes and doesn't like say holding. anything about them. And then just leaves. And I'm like, what? You know, he's probably seen the craziest shit with That's the why family. I'm like, is this, I think it's just like, yeah, an indictment of rich people. Like, yeah. you wouldn't believe what these people are just like, eh. <laughs> this is so casual. I hate seeing people tied to the bed like that, though. Mm, yep. We know why. I hate mm. it. I hate it. Anyways. I did write, being rich is awesome. When they're, like, riding bikes <laughs> around the island, I, I was like, y'all don't got anything to do. Oh, I know. Just fuck around. Have the time of your lives. Yeah, to the, in the summertime? Mm-hmm. And I don't like, do they not time? work? I don't understand. Like, come on. pets to take care of. So fucking sick. Um, Oh hilarious that fucking again another vince vaughn quote i'm just gonna be quoting vince vaughn i'm that cool kid in high school right now exactly we're, we're taking it like, back to 2005 yeah, for real <laughs> where owen wilson is like claire's mom just made me feel her boobs and fucking uh vince vaughn is like yeah i was jacked up on the table in front of the whole family and wait till you do that and have some real fucking problems and he's like so fucking <laughs> angry so and yeah, that's another part that happens is he definitely gets jacked up mm. under the table in front of the whole family. Oh. God, such a nightmare. 
over his pants, which I'm Ooh. like, damn, she must have skills, dog. Well, and you know, maybe for that's real. when he starts to fall for her. He's like, because spoiler uh, alert, he actually <laughs> does fall in love with, <laughs> which does. is such a good twist. I, I love know. that because they could have written it to like he ditches her or does something crazy, but I do like that the twist is like, I love her. <laughs> I'm glad that that happens because she was kind of not that i necessarily believe in karma but she was kind of his karma where she lied to him yeah and she's like you thought i was serious you idiot and she th- you thought i was a virgin not far from it i just said that because i thought that's what you wanted to hear and he's just like, like i got played i got fucking i got bamboozled. pickup artist yep mm-hmm. and it's like that's what you've been doing mm-hmm. and that's why he fell for her deception disgrace, disgrace. um where oh and then he's like yeah why don't you enjoy yourself while i ice my balls and spit up blood <laughs> team player like so fucking annoyed i'm like yes that's so good anyway oh and fucking ew bradley cooper so he gets sick because owen wilson puts eye drops in his drink which i didn't know was a thing how do you not know it's a thing i don't know well, I don't. what movie is that featured prominently in oh but like dumb is, and dumber. yeah dumb and dumber. but is that a uh is that a it must real? be real right it's in two movies yeah i guess that's true based on a true story but that that's that's the only reason why i thought it was real i was like this also happens in dumb and dumber right. so and it they, must be true they must have gotten it from that movie so maybe they're just like big on the dumb and dumber lore mm, that's your little uh nod Behaves. to another best friend mm-hmm. duo mm-hmm. who but, gets a rich girl <clears throat> so true um but okay so yeah bradley cooper is getting sick whatever and um rachel mcadams comes in and she's just like hey are you okay and he's just like oh yeah i'm okay like and he's being so rude and she's just like you know you could tell me if you're not feeling well you can be vulnerable like it's just me and he's just like you want to help me do you kid go get me a soda and he's being so such an asshole and i'm like what the fuck is wrong with y'all and this is why like i feel like a lot of people in these positions of like power and like lots of money and shit do get married based off of solely that which is so sad. Mm-hmm. Like, she probably thought, I have no other option. Well, and yeah, her dad's being such an asshole telling everybody, once they get married, it'll be mm-hmm. the merger of these two families. And isn't Gross. that great? And he, like, just keeps telling everybody. And you could tell that's the only reason she's, like, going to marry this guy. Because mm-hmm. he's a fucking idiot. And she clearly, like, respects her dad so mm-hmm. much. Which is, yeah, disgusting. Yeah. It's so sad. Um, also, fucking... The way that Todd describes his painting of Vince Vaughn is, <laughs> it's sexual and violent. <laughs> and it's like not. It's sexual. He's just like, violent. He's, he's just like happy like, in the forest naked. You know, I recreated that exact painting. Really? For someone that will not be named, but it was a dude that I was like seeing and like sleeping with at, wow. at a certain time. And he loved that movie. And I was like, oh, I'm going to recreate that's this so, painting for that's him. That's so sweet. And it's. And it was funny because I brought it. So I brought it to him thinking he was like house sitting because he, he came back in town um, to visit his family. I thought he was house sitting, though. So when I show up, I have the painting and it was his little sister <laughs> that answered the fucking door. And I was like, oh, hi, I have a sexual and violent <laughs> painting I need to deliver. <laughs> Is your mom mom? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I love Anyways, that. Anyways, it was probably thrown out, but. Mm-hmm so funny <laughs> so it's funny that you've consistently watched this movie it sounds like yeah i've, I've watched i watch it probably once a year wow because i haven't seen this like basically since it came out maybe like 2009 but i haven't seen it in years yeah i mean i i just the one-liners in the movie just keep me going and I they're just, just so they're funny. so charming i'm like yeah. i want to watch it again just to watch them i know Sparkle like and that's shine. the best part of the movie is how they interact with mm-hmm. each other it really is they're just so they you can tell that they just they i mean besides owen wilson being like super selfish in the moment when he's like fixated on this woman <clears throat> you can tell that they really love each other yeah. very much and their friendship is very cute like how vince vaughn sleeps over at owen wilson's yeah, house every, every birthday year. So mm-hmm. sweet. Also, we're like at an hour. Holy no, shit. no, never mind. Sorry. I thought we were at an hour and 45 minutes. I lied. We're at we're, an hour. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, let's, we could hurry it. I only have like one more page of notes, I think. Anyway. Um, also, the way that fucking Vince Vaughn um, puts his plate together, his breakfast plate together. I'm like, God, oh my you're God, so he hot. Drizzled it all with maple syrup. Yeah. He's just like, uh, it, and they're like specifically showing it for some, I think they're just like, this is his personality. Cause he's just mm-hmm. like stacking cinnamon buns and eggs yes. and fucking hash browns on top, pouring syrup all over that bitch. Also, I respect the fact that he's like, I'm going to recharge. I'm going to eat by myself over yeah. here. I'm like, which me. is Shay's life. Dude, that is me. If I could, not that I want to eat every meal by myself. That's not true. But if I could, like, lunch when I'm working, 
if I'm eating with someone else, it's not a good time. <laughs> I need to be by myself. We need some isolation throughout the day. Yes. Okay. It's just, it helps. And he's like, I need to recharge. I need to recharge my batteries. I'm going to eat. And then later we'll get together and we'll talk. But right now I need to be alone. I'm like, yes. Like, hello. It's not that hard to understand. And he did have a rough, rough night. He's been having a rough mm-hmm. weekend, baby. <clears throat> I also wrote rich people in their sailboat sailboats slash Ugh. the quail hunt. I know. Like, I love how they're, what? but they are like doing stereotypically rich people shit. Absolutely. And like Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson keep commenting on it. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> oh yeah. And one of my favorite fucking lines. Cause like, um, Bradley Cooper, his character, his name is sack, which is weird. Gross. Sack. Weird. Sack dude. Okay. Yeah, but anyways, no. sack lunch. I'm like, bleh. anyway, Sack, like, is making himself, throughout the movie, is making himself seem like this, like, environmentalist, you know? He did, like, Habitat for Humanity, and he, like, saved this, like, baby seal from oil spillage, and da 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 But then he's the one that's like, let's go quail hunting, da 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 Right, which is also, like, such a rich person thing. Yes. Rich people, to make themselves feel better about being rich, will often do, like, humanitarian things that don't actually help anything. Right. But then when they are confronted about their money, they could be like, oh, it's fine because I did Habitat for Humanity. Mm-hmm. Or I gave to a scholarship. And right. It's like, wow. It's all just big manipulations. Mm-hmm. That's all the don't life. Don't give a fuck. No. They don't give a single fuck. They just want you to not grab your pitchforks and torches and take their house. Period. Exactly. They're like, this makes me look good. I'm going to keep doing it, even though I'm a piece of shit. But <laughs> so then Vince Vaughn like calls him out on the shit when he's just like, let's go quail. Blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, Mr. Envi- <laughs> and Mr. Environmentalist, a hunter. Interesting. And then he's like, they're d- desecrating the grubber population. You got a fucking problem with that? And he's just so like, uh, not nearly as much as I do with you, the uh, attire you have on or your general point of view towards everybody. But let's kill some birds. I'm fucking psyched. And I'm like, <laughs> God, yeah. He also has you. like an almost identical line in Dodgeball. Oh, he does. See, where it's like Ben Stiller. That. Oh my God, you're gonna. Uh, I know. It's I'm like peak Vince Vaughn. I'm he's die. so hot. I know. And Ben Stiller's character is like one of my favorite Ben Stiller characters. Is he just like a dick again? He's the owner of Globo Gym, and he's like a nepo baby, and he. Uh, it's, oh it's my god amazing. it's amazing well we need to cover that but she says something like does it bother you and, and Vince Vaughn says something like not nearly as much as your hair does or something oh, it's something incredible like that. that see he probably he probably uh improvs a lot mm-hmm. I bet I think so um I also wrote so they play so Rachel McAdams character and Owen Wilson are playing slap hands if you guys know what I'm talking oh, about oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So quick you stick your hands out and someone sticks their hands underneath so your hands are like on top of each other you and then slap them. yeah you like secretly slap them <clears throat> that's one of the flirtiest fucking games of all mm-hmm. goddamn time from the time we were kids but up until now even sometimes i see people doing that but i think the biggest um flirty hand thing that you can do now is comparing hand sizes like oh let me touch your hand like, oh, wait, your hands are so big but the slappy thing is like it makes you keyed into the other person mm-hmm. to an extent where it's like wow like, it's electric it's yeah. electric it's electric <laughs> 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 uh, oh christ oh. Uh, now i'm just gonna be doing that all <laughs> Electric slide. We should just call it the electric slide. All right, we're gonna call it the electric slide. No one else will understand what we're saying. From here on out. Um, fast forwarding. Owen Wilson and fucking Rachel McAdams kiss on the beach, baby. Oh yeah, and it looks so nice because they're literally um, alone on this fucking beach. Because they're rich and they have their bikes and they probably like own that whole island. Are you fucking go fuck yourself? Also. A little bit later, she's sitting on a swing. Like, it's like a tree swing, but it's, like, long and huge. And I'm like, dude, that is my dream swing, bruh. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. Such a nice. Very Lana Del Rey. Like, oh. Loves it. I fell off a swing like that when I was a oh, kid. Oh, no. But it was on a hill, mm-hmm. and I it was the first time <gasps> I broke my toe. Who put a swing on a hill like that? Someone. It was at um, my cousins, who I don't talk to anymore. It was someone that they knew their camp so they put it on a hill because that's where their camp was thinking it wasn't going to be a big deal they're like oh, yeah it's gonna be so nice because it sounds da. very dangerous but because i was a big girl i broke the fucking swing fell down the hill broke my toe that was the ouch, first time i broke my toe ouch, 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 ouch. my pinky toe's been oh, through a lot y'all really i've broken has. that toe three times it's probably now? like susceptible to breaking yeah from that fateful day. I do have tiny little pinky toes. Everyone has tiny little pinky toes. 
Huh? They're the smallest toe. Yeah, but mine are like especially <laughs> tiny. A little tic tac. Yeah, little. It, <laughs> genuinely, yes. <laughs> Seriously, yes. <clears throat> um, and uh, I was trying to find a which uh, wedding crashers character are you, and I found one, but then it immediately devolved into porn. Hmm. Huh. So I'm gonna keep working on that, but um, I don't have too many more notes. I just wrote that Will Ferrell's character is also very hot. Oh my god, it's so ridiculous! I didn't think he's, he's hot, hot at all. No. Oh no. Oh, I do. I was like, this guy's about to literally murder somebody. Like, I'm gonna see him on the news. Yeah, but <laughs> one of these ladies is not gonna make it home. <laughs> but there was just something about his energy. He just was like <laughs> exuding something very well. Clearly, something very sexual. But, but he lives with his mom, and it's uh, annoying. I mean, and a hater. <laughs> he screams at her to get a meatloaf. No, it's that's not <laughs> hot, but it's just everything else is. <laughs> no, he's just like, yeah, you're coming with, and he's just like, no, and I'm like, why am I attracted? I don't to know you? why. Oh, well, he's well. hot, but Will Ferrell. Oh, whoops, Will Ferrell is just hot mm-hmm. in general. I think so. Maybe that's just part maybe of that's it. what it is. But anyway, and then he and I love the part where he's like. Huh, that died in a hand gliding accident. Watch me, I'm dying to die. And then he's like, ha, what a freak. Like, so- <laughs> he's so horrible. I, know, he's I horrible. can't believe you thought he was hot. Listen, in real life, would I be into him? <laughs> no, but I think just his energy. His energy was horrible. <laughs> his energy and the fact that he's wearing like a robe. And he looks like a hot Hugh it's Hefner. the robe. He's hot. Let's chalk it up to the robe. Okay, let's do it. Um, I do love when Rachel McAdams would like... So Sack exposes them and he's like, they're wedding crashers who crash weddings, have sex with women. And she yeah. goes, is it true to Owen Wilson? And he's like, well, it's us And she goes, it's a yes or no question. And I was like, yes, bitch. Mm-hmm. Make him answer. Yes. I love that too. So good. And I hate that Owen Wilson has to be like the one to save her. Like she should have just broken up with Sack on her own. I know. She like, knew that she wasn't kind loving of him. lame that Owen Wilson has to do it, but. I know, me too. But of course, like they had to make him the savior. Yeah. And, and, and the movie I thought got like weirdly serious at the end. Like definitely. it takes a turn. It takes a real quick after turn. you meet Will Ferrell, and then he's like, "I go to funerals," and all of a sudden you're at this funeral, and like this widow's crying, and Owen Wilson's like, "I have to find my love." He's like contemplating suicide. Like it gets mm-hmm. really dark there. It's literally within the last fifteen minutes. Yeah, and I'm like, "Whoa, yeah. this has gone awry." Yeah. And uh, luckily, you find out that Vince Vaughn's character is marrying Isla Fisher, which yeah, is Yeah, that's so cute. And at their wedding is when Owen Wilson comes in. He's just like, I must save you. And he, like, tells her the truth about everything. And she's just like, hee hee, sack. I'm really sorry. I really am. Okay, bye. I'm going to mm-hmm. make out with fucking Owen mm-hmm. Wilson now. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, it's about them at Yeah, I was going to say, wedding. Vince Vaughn is very nice about his wedding being, like, <laughs> shambles. Very, very. <laughs> but you know what? He is a messy bitch. Mm-hmm. So he would, he he would be into that. So is Isla. So mm, yeah, they're like, yay! They're, like, they're so cute together. They're very cute. I love them. But anyway, that, those were all my notes too. Okay, sick. So I give you. Uh, I'm going to give you the trivia quiz. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know what we're going to do about the personality quiz. I don't know if you want to try to find some. Okay, I'll try. Okay, number one. What position does Christopher Walken have in government? He's like the Secretary of Treasury. Bingo. Okay. What is Owen Wilson's definition of true love? Um. The soul's recognition of its counterpoint in another. Nailed it. Which I think is actually very good. Yeah, me too. Like, I was like, wow. It's a it's deep very, ass. Like, he said it so casually. Yeah, I'm like, and I'm oh. like wow, that's a deep ass and <clears throat> accurate definition. Yeah. Uh, what is Owen Wilson's and Vince Vaughn's fake business? Oh, uh, it's called... <laughs> Um, Ooh, that was gonna be my holy bonus shirts point. and pants. That's going to be my bonus point if you can remember what it's called. Holy yeah. shirts and pants. And mm-hmm. it's like they take sheep's wool <laughs> and they give it to homeless people or people experiencing homelessness who then turn that into cloth and make clothes slash sell it to other people experiencing homelessness yes yes End nailed quote. it <laughs> what is rachel mcadams mom's nickname kitty cat kitty cat huh and then the last question what oh i already gave this away what food does will ferrell shout at his mom for ma the meatloaf that's something i quote my dad and i quote like every fucking day which is very funny Mm -hmm. he's so mean to her he's so mean but she did try to kill him (laughs) oh and i forgot about that (laughs) she did try to literally murder him wow so they just have a bad relations in general Anyway, yay, I nailed it. You nailed it. Hundo percent. Loves it. Okay, let me see if I can I'll find. I'll also try to find something. It's uh, mm. You'll probably find the quiz I found, but yeah, it's going to turn into a bunch of pop-ups. 
Maybe we could just take some sort of like wedding quiz, like wedding Ooh. personality quiz. Ooh, that's a good idea. Wedding personality quiz. Um, wedding style, I'm getting. <clears throat> oh, what type of bride will you be on your wedding day? Ooh, and there's also we can predict your wedding style with this quiz. On oh, Buzzfeed. let's do that one. Let's see if it's right. Okay. I'll do you first. Okay. Did you think about what your wedding would be like when you were a child? No. Okay, there's a <laughs> nope, so I'll click that for you. Okay. How many close friends do you have? Zero to one, two to three, four to five, six to seven, eight to nine, or ten or more? I'm like, define, I don't know how they're using like the best term friends? close friends. Like someone you talk to often, somebody you can confide in. Um, Maybe we could say the amount of people who were in your like yeah, wedding party. Seven. seven. Okay. Six to seven. How do you feel about parties? I love to party. It really depends. I want to go home. I never leave the house. They're fun or they're fun. Uh, was the it depends one just it depends on its own? It's, it's, yeah, it really depends. It really depends. Okay. Some parties are great. Some parties suck. True to that. Do you want to have a wedding party? Yes. I don't know. I have to. Yes, but small. No, or maybe. Yes. <laughs> yes. I have to. I have to. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to have an after party? No, maybe, yes. An informal one, an organic one that just happens, or I don't know. See, I want an organic one that just happens. We talked about planning one, but I'm like, people have to clean up. I don't know if people are going to have the energy. It's like, if it happens, it happens. Mm hmm. I bet it will. We'll see. Do you like being the center of attention? Never. Sometimes, yes. No, but I would for my wedding. I don't care or I don't know. Um, it's either I don't care or no, I would for my wedding. No. Let's go with no, but I would for my no, wedding. No, but what I would for my wedding. If you had an unlimited budget, would you have a huge wedding? And then, okay, weird. Would you have a huge wedding? Massive? Maybe. No. <laughs> big, but not massive. I'd have multiple weddings or sure. <laughs> I'd say big, but not massive. Okay. And... Ooh, yours, your wedding style is beach wedding. Ooh. You're going to have a beach wedding. No. Nope. ocean will be spraying <laughs> right in your face. What the fuck? <laughs> the dolphin song? <laughs> From the yeah, That's the song I sing at your wedding? Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm go excited ahead. to hear your wedding style. I am too. Okay. So did you think about what your wedding would be like when you were a child? Nope. Yes. I don't remember. Maybe vaguely. Kind of. I didn't want a wedding. Yes, I did. Oh. How many close friends do you have? Zero to one, two to three, four to five, six to seven, eight to nine, ten or more. Yikes. Uh, let's see. I would say like ten. So ten or more. Yeah. How do you feel about parties? I love to party. It really depends. I want to go home. I never leave the house. They're fun. They're fine. I'll say they're fun. <clears throat> I like them, but I can't like do it all the time because mm. I need my alone time and chill That's time. Right. Do you want to have a wedding party? Yes, I don't know. I have to. Yes, but small. No, maybe. I'll say yes. Yes. Do you want to have an after party? No, maybe. Yes, an informal one, an organic one that just happens, or I don't know. I'd say an informal one. An informal one. Do you like being the center of attention? Never. Sometimes, yes. No, but I would for my wedding. I don't care, or I don't know. Sometimes, yeah. Uh, sometimes, okay. If you had an unlimited budget, would you have a huge wedding? Massive. Maybe. No. Big, but not massive. I'd have multiple weddings. Sure. No. No. That Hard gives no. me much anxiety. Okay, your wedding style is big glamour. No. Your wedding will be... <laughs> So, so far, not accurate. I'm like, right after he said, I don't Your want to. Your wedding will be high on glamour. Everyone will be blown away. A lot of attention to detail. Elaborate decorations. People will gasp. Interesting. That's like mm. the opposite of what I've always wanted. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, you're more of a beach wedding gal. <laughs> totally. That's why I'm like. But I'm not a glam wedding gal. No, you're like a, I don't even know how I would describe your your wedding how would you uh, affordable it? <laughs> but, but, but like style wise how would you describe uh, it romantic yeah it's very like romantic very romantic not anything and cozy. too like 
like explosive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cozy and romantic. Yeah, cozy, romantic, very like green, like mm-hmm. you know. I know the venue space for that where we're actually getting married is so pretty. It is so pretty. I've been telling everyone who's asking. <laughs> I'm like, it is so gorgy and it it's perfect for them. It's, I'm so excited. But anyways, thank you so much for joining us for the first yes. episode of, the of Wedding, wedding Month. month. Ugh, wow, I can't I'm so believe excited. it. <laughs> I'm so excited for your wedding. Thank you. It's going to be Me so too. beautiful. I hope so. <laughs> we'll debrief all of you after it happens. Oh, hell yeah. That'll be super fun. Bonus episode. Oh my God, that'd be fun. Yeah. I'm and we down. could compare it to like what movies it was most like. Ooh, good. Oh, uh, yeah. We could talk about some of the tea that happens, not saying any names, but yeah, I'm we'll sure that there will anonymous. be. We'll keep it anonymous. It'll be so much fun. All well, right. thanks well, for we coming. Love I love you. Guys. We love you. You're special. You're you cool. You look great. Yeah, you look fucking hot today, bro. On wow. some Will Ferrell shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, he's so hot. Like, for the love of God. Anyway, All right. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.